welcome back and if you're new here i'm chrissy at a little glam a lot of mom i'm a homeschooling mom of five kids ages six to 17 years old on our sixth year of well officially homeschooling today's video is about nature journaling with kids i've shared a video like this in the past but it was primarily focused on the resources in this video i'm sharing 10 tips that i've collected from my experiences along with some resources to support those tips. This video is for you if you wish to inspire, teach, and or pass the skill of nature journaling onto your family or implement this as part of your homeschool work. But before I get started, let's define nature journaling. And I quote, nature journaling is collecting and organizing your observations, questions, connections, and explanations on the pages of a notebook using words, pictures, and numbers. Tip number one, if it's possible, keep your nature journaling supplies organized together and accessible. This goes with anything really. If something isn't easily accessible, the likelihood is that it won't get used. Or the same if it's a material that is stored away and you have to climb a ladder to access it, it won't get done. I keep all of our nature journaling notebooks, books, nature reference books, picture books, and field guides all in one area. The same for our resources to take outdoors like field cards, binoculars, compass, and more. Tip number three, less is more with field observations. You have the best tool in your back pocket already, your phone. Observing and listening can't be done if you're fiddling with books, backpacks, watercolor palettes. We like to take photos, videos, notes, and therefore leave room open for discussions of our observations. We bring our collections home to do further research and then apply that to an entry if we wish to. What we do carry outside with us are water bottles, in slings, binoculars, and maybe a pocket field guide. So know what resources to take outdoors. For example, some field guides are best suited to reference to once you're indoors because they're too large to tow around or not organized simple enough to find the correct identification. Not water or outdoor proof. Again, the best tool is your phone, and if you own an iPhone, there's this neat feature in Photos to ID a plant. It also works with insects. I don't utilize any other app because I have an iPhone, but I know there are many identification apps available for mobile phones. Tip number three, follow the seasons and environment around you. Staying true to the environment around you is crucial in making real life connections and experiences. I'll give an example. We were following a guide which suggested studying acorns during a time of the year when mature oak trees had not dropped acorns due to our tropical environment. The guide suggested going out to nature to find acorns to copy into a journal entry and collect enough to make a craft. We tried. We walked our surrounding area, drove out to locations, and it resulted in disappointment. Sure, we could purchase acorns on the web, reference to printables or books. However, then we are missing out on the benefits of being in nature like making connections. I'll add that we occasionally do study nature that isn't around us, like the rainforest, for example, or we can't step out into the Arctic uh, out our door. So we do use books and documentaries. My point is that physically interacting with natural environments most allows children to experiment, wonder, observe, therefore developing curious minds and appreciation for the natural world. And an add-on to this tip is be sure that the bulk of your collection in field guides are books that are for your region, for fauna and flora that you will see and connect with outside your door. Tip number four, I want to tell you and encourage you that nature journaling indoors is okay too. 
This is especially true if you're in a season of parenting younger children. Nature and its elements are unpredictable. There are days that we just need to be intentional about seizing a good moment in the day with favorable weather to just get outside. We explore, connect, slow down, but also run and climb to get the wiggles out, use all of our senses, and then head home to journal our experiences in a setting that has cooling, refreshments, snacks to re-energize, the wind isn't blowing our pages closed. This is also when we get lost within the books in our home library, being inspired and awed by the marvelous nature books that are available to us thanks to naturalists and artists. There will be opportunities and an appropriate age for nature journaling outdoors. Don't fall under the expectations that nature journaling always has to be the swim of inspiration in the middle of a hike or in the forest. I thought this would be a good fit within this video to share some of our favorite reference type of resources for nature journaling inspiration. We love bird call guides. We recently purchased this marvelous giant feast of 250 North American birds in song. We started with the little book of series. This one is on backyard birds, but there's uh, garden birds, woodland birds. I think there is dawn birds too. Of course, the highly coveted Julia Rothman collection. I've definitely overshared this series over the last several years on my channel, but this collection is a must. And I don't like to use that coined phrase, must have lightly. There are spreads on top of spreads to inspire journal entries and nature studies, especially in this nature anatomy title, journaling moon phases to a specific animal or leaf species. Look at this marvelous pond scene. I swooned over this spread immediately and want to recreate it in my journal one day. Ocean Anatomy is our second favorite title in this series. We love referencing to this collection for our anatomy type of scientific illustrations and labeling entries. Like this wonderful anatomy journal entry created by my Noah, age 8, inspired by this Julia Rothman book. Another favorite are DK's reference books. I enjoy the collaboration of illustrations with photography, but most the value of these are in the bite-sized snippets of information throughout the books actually add up to a ton of educational value in our nature studies. Tip number five, what if we don't have a collection of reference books for every nature element? That's okay. I want to encourage you to use stories and picture books. There are many living books and classics in our home library that we have used for inspiration in a journal entry. We've used a beloved classic like Beatrix Potter stories to inspire entries of vegetables and wildlife gardens. or imagining the scenes of the secret garden, journaling an entry on the robin who helps Mary Lennox find the secret garden, an entry for all the flowers that are described in the book. One of our favorite nature-inspired series are the Burgess books for children. Veteran storyteller and nature lover Thornton Burgess provides fascinating information to children readers as he describes habitats and the many life forms interwoven with engaging tales and beloved animal characters. For example, in the Seashore book, we're introduced to spider crabs, sea cucumbers, sand eels, lobsters, starfish, fish, and the seahorse. There are several titles in the series covering diverse habitats and animals. Just overall, a wonderful collection of living books to inspire nature journaling. Picture books are also useful tools in nature journaling and likely more available at your local library than field guides and of course more engaging for children with illustrations. We have too many to choose a favorite. And I could browse and share about our nature picture books all day. So I have a nature book list listed on my Amazon storefront. I will leave that link for you to browse down below. 
and biographies of naturalists and nature artists. What better way to get inspired to Nature Journal than to learn about the pioneers in this field? The spreads in our picture book biographies are just stunning and definitely inspiring. Tip number six, good quality supplies and tools matter. Listen, I'm all just for the act of doing it and that's a good start. However, you can't expect quality effort if the results just won't reward it. We all start somewhere, but eventually we have to move on from a notebook and Crayola crayons. I've seen homeschool parents hand a composition notebook and a pencil and expect for a child to be inspired to create and it's just not enough. As a guide, we have to invest just a little bit more and equip our children with the appropriate tools. Children will get frustrated with subpar tools that won't produce good pigment or pages that tear because it can't support erasing pencil lines, let alone water in watercoloring. With that, I'll say that this should be appropriate accordingly to age. For example, I've mentioned that my teens and I love the Moleskine brand and quality of notebooks. My teens and I are mature enough to efficiently use these costly notebook pages. My young ones, not so much. So for them, I still purchase a good spiral bound notebook with quality multimedia paper. I think that a watercolor page notebook is best suited for nature journaling. However, if you're on a tight budget or purchasing for multiple children, I'd start with at least quality drawing or multimedia paper notebook. Paper matters and so do the media tools like the watercolor pigments. We like to use the Windsor & Newton Cotman series. This is the cost effective line by this brand. Prisma colors for color pencils and we also enjoy the Arteza expert line of pencils. We are also sure to use the appropriate brushes. For example, we don't interchange acrylic and watercolor brushes. And also monitoring our brushes for sparse and damaged bristles and replacing them as needed. Tip number seven, tap into tools that help build confidence in your young nature journal artist. For example, we utilize watercolor pencils, which are basically a colored pencil, but the pigment is conducive to blending with water, giving off a watercolor effect. There is more control with the pencil, easier for outlining and placement of a certain detail or color. It's easily blended with a watercolor paintbrush with water. In the past, when the kids were more prone to spilling jars of water or also good for on the go are these paintbrushes where one end you have the hairs or bristles and the others to be filled with water and with light pressure, water is ejected through the hairs to blend the pigment, eliminating the need for a water jar. A guided nature journal is a good resource to begin with. This is an old version by The Good and the Beautiful that Bella started with in pre-K. What's good about a resource like this, a guided nature journal, is that there are prompts which could be less daunting than handing a blank page. You'll see she didn't utilize this cover to cover, but I kept it to show the progress in her nature journaling artistry like a before and after. Drawing books and video tutorials. We enjoy the Learn to Draw series for the younger years. And then moving on to more advanced resources like this one, Peggy Dean's Guide, which is Bella's age 10 current favorite. And tracing pads or light up pads. This isn't a professional one, but a kid's tracing pad by Crayola. And it's serviced us so well throughout several years. I think we might be ready for another one soon. So the idea with this is that the child places a book page or printed copy of what they want to illustrate and then their blank page over it and trace it. Again, the point is to build confidence but also make this an enjoyable habit. These journals are meant to help cultivate within the child joy and discovery, not a source of frustration. If your child finds it difficult to illustrate, then offer a tool for support. Tracing aids with learning the movements to formations of lines and curves 
Naturally and with some confidence building, the child will move on to freehanding their illustrations. Tip number eight, training for the guide or teacher. If possible, it is good for the teacher or parent to keep a nature notebook too. It's a life we live together. A quote by Susan Schaefer in For the Children's Sake. Utilize tools for yourself too, not just for teaching, but to cultivate your own joy and wonder in the natural world. Some of my favorite book resources for this, I just shared about Peggy Dean's Guide to Drawing and Watercolor. Everyday watercoloring, which is more broad on the skill of watercoloring, not necessarily nature journaling, but the skills are applicable. And my favorite in this resource is specific to nature journaling, Keeping a Nature Journal by Claire Walker Leslie. The author and artist guides you through the steps of getting started from tools to nature journaling styles to a guide through the season. And there's even a section on teaching nature journaling. But what I love most about it are her own samples of work showing and encouraging us to make the journal our own. Tip number nine is a two-part. First, don't limit the ideas for nature entries and don't limit the skills utilized. I know the most common idea is to nature journal what you see, but think outside the box when it comes to journal entry ideas. Perhaps even keep a list of ideas on hand. The same goes for the skill or work put into the journal entry. For example, in studying the Everglades, Bella worked on a wetlands Venn diagram. In this entry, she learned about the topic itself, how to use a Venn diagram, practiced handwriting, map work, and art on her illustration of Florida. So this work covered nature study, geography, writing, handwriting, and creative expression. Another example is this entry on strawberries. They illustrated the anatomy of a strawberry and wrote down the procedure to strawberry DNA extraction. A lot of our entries are anatomy and we incorporate grammar, vocab, and copy work. Here's an example of Bella using a dictionary for vocabulary words and incorporating a scrapbooking element with dried flowers. And of course, developing artistry and creativity here, Bella created her first wheel. This one is to represent the life cycle of a flowering plant. We stretch out some of our entries and topics by adding another project to it, like models or dioramas, lap books, and watching educational videos. Continuing along with this tip, I want to share uh, some of Luna's journal nature journal entries just to show how nature journaling can be modified for younger siblings. You'll see that she started with coloring printables and pasting the page into her journal. That's a super simple modification for toddler preschool age. So then you'll see that she started incorporating cutting skills and wanted to cut out her coloring work and paste that into her journal along with labeling to then illustrating some of her entries but still cutting and pasting for the labeling. Here are two examples of when she was most interested in creating a model of the study than she was in the journal entry. And while I would like more emphasis in the journaling part, that's okay. The information of the study was still retained and so I encouraged most of her energy towards her model of a coral reef and one on the layers of the earth. We start to see more progress here. She used a light pad to trace the manatee, watercolored it, and did the copywork and handwriting portion. In this entry, I encourage Luna to explore and illustrate more spirals. And you'll see an example of some of her most recent work here. She really put a lot of effort into the illustration of this wildflower for an anatomy entry. She took her time with highlights and outlining and blending, and I'm just so proud of her progress. In other words, encourage making the journal their own. Each nature journal will be different and unique, and that's okay. And by the way, this journal was started uh, when Luna was age five, and she's now age six. Age doesn't matter because skill can be developed in different stages or ages, but just for reference, so you know, Luna is six.
And finally, tip number 10, providing a nature-rich environment. If there is anything that you take from this video is that the best inspiration will come by surrounding yourself and your family with nature. We can cultivate a wonder for the natural world by providing an environment within the home that enhances and supports exploration, microscopes and microscope slides, magnifying glass, life cycle kits or figures and trays, bringing in nature into the home, starting a nature collection of rocks or feathers or seashells, collect pine cones, acorns to use as loose parts, bring in a plant or two for the child to care for, grow a garden or terrarium. My point here is that children need a consistent contact with nature and ample space and time to explore and become familiar with it. All right, friends, those are my top 10 tips for nature journaling with children, but I do have one more thought to add in here you know, typical Chrissy style. And my thought is that in the past, I have attempted the habit of nature journaling as Chrissy, the eager homeschool mom who finds any crevice to fit in a homeschool lesson. The act and meaning of this habit shifted for me when I let go of the lesson expectations and saw this habit through the lens of Chrissy, the naturalist wannabe, admirer of the greatest artist, our Lord and creator of all. So now my perspective is from my eagerness to hear God through the still and quiet of nature. And the emphasis rather than being on lesson opportunities is on connection and being rooted to him through his creation. I came to realize that nature journaling is my worship to the Lord and sharing my love for nature with my children and others like you is my way of sharing the gospel.